morning. This is Ron Warman from the Sage Group, and I am going to be your moderator today for a great conversation. Uh, this is a the final uh, webinar series broadcast before the great conversation on the 5th and 6th in Seattle on the waterfront. Uh, we have uh, close to 300 people joining us from the entire ecosystem, including security executives, uh, integrators, consultants, and of course, uh, domain expertise in a number of disciplines, including uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we're really looking forward to that. Today, we have a wonderful, um, what I call a fireside chat, uh, to kind of introduce you to one of the conversations we're going to be having on the 5th and 6th, and that's intelligence at the edge. Uh, today, we have a, a number of speakers available to us to discuss the subject. Uh, but the key thing here is one of the things we found at the great conversation is sometimes we think in terms of silos of excellence. And we kind of stay in those silos, so we stay in those lanes, and we don't take advantage of the institutional knowledge and the domain expertise of others. So this story is really about uh, two security executives who leverage the ecosystem in a very powerful way. Our speakers today include Dylan Hayes from Seattle Children's Hospital. Seattle Children's is the largest geographically uh, in the United States and also is one of the most renowned. And Nick Weber from Grant County PUD. Nick is uh, uh, an incredible spokesperson for the energy industry and the security industry. And we're looking forward to his thoughts. Uh, but to lead it off, Matthew Jerusi. Matt Jerusi is going to be on the line with us today from Asa Abloy. And Matt is one of those domain uh, uh, experts that Dylan and Nick have relied on over time. And he'll be sharing his insights into what Asa has seen in the marketplace from uh, Intelligence at the Edge. Matt, are you on the line? I am, Ron, thanks. You betcha. So Matt, tell me about Intelligence at the Edge. You have a definition here. Yeah, so um, as I was talking with Nick and Dylan in regards to what kind of breakout uh, we should present at the great conversation, uh, this discussion about intelligence and, you know, the theme of the great conversation uh, following the um, artificial intelligence kind of theme, we really wanted to kind of take a definition of what truly is intelligence. Obviously, you've got, you know, a lot of data out there and data points, but how do we define it? And you look at the definition on the screen and it's really actionable information which supports some type of decision making or gives an organization a strategic advantage. So given that definition, the, the rest of the breakout kind of fits uh, within that framework. Um, and, and when you ask yourselves, or when you talk about intelligence and, and formulating what that means to your organization, you need to ask yourself four very basic questions. Um, and you see here we have, how are you receiving your information? Are you receiving the right information? How are you analyzing it? And then does it help your organization? And, and really when it, what it pertains to this breakout, we're gonna focus on the first two. How are you receiving this information? Um, and then are you receiving the right information? And then how does one accomplish setting a functional information um, data gathering process? Well, first we have to take a look at the challenges facing security professionals. So as we all know, today's security executive, director, manager, supervisor, supervisor, et cetera, are being bombarded with a tremendous amount of information, a lot of which is really non-actionable data that rarely gets used or looked at. And as we all know, these individuals are being asked to do more and more with less and less. So to mitigate this barrage, you really have to take a step back and align now you're you're not suggesting most of us are pointed haired managers are are you matt no not at all <laughs> <laughs> but once you do that um you know i i'm sure everybody on the call understands that uh a management will just give you a blank check to execute your plan right mm -hmm. well that's that's probably not the case so 
how do you deploy your program with the limited resources you currently have? Well, by doing exactly this, leveraging your ecosystem. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Nick, uh, if Nick has joined the call, kind of speak to the ESRM model that I'm sure everybody understands on the left, you know, identifying pri and prioritizing risks and assets, et cetera, uh, to improve, enhance your program. But really, uh, if you look at the graph on the left, or I'm sorry, the right, uh, you have you have all these various ecosystem players and stakeholders. You know you've got advisors, manufacturers, um, and then you know the process behind the business need. So by leveraging all of these different players, you you really get a good uh, sense and uh, background for how you're going to achieve your goal. Nick, are you on the line? It's interesting, Matt, you brought up uh, enterprise risk management uh, and uh, in, in particular to the, the, um, the graph on the, on the left. Um, what, we're finding, what we're finding is this methodology is still being used in a, on a silo basis, either from the financial auditing end, like the ERM end, or uh, to some degree at the security executive end. Uh, and I think what uh, most chief security officers are telling me these days is the more they are able to not only fashion an ecosystem internally with the true owners of risk, which are the functional heads, uh, including your IT CISO, uh, but also uh, a, a tightly knit ecosystem uh, with uh, strategic advisors in the risk assessment area in the uh, technology vendor area, uh, in the integrator area, and so forth. And what you're suggesting is if I blended these two graphs together, I'd get more of a comprehensive view and probably a, a, a better chance at success as I implement projects over time. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I am, because as we all know, um, you know, it depends on whatever that goal is within the organization, whether it's whether it's risk mitigation, compliance um, regulations, or even um, what we've seen in the markets is, is establishing a market differentiator uh, within their space, which can equate to talent retention and, and, and recruitment. So as we, as we engage with our partners, we really try to keep this kind of model in mind. Great. Well, with that said, uh, Dylan Hayes. Uh, Dylan has uh, been attending the great conversation for a number of years. And uh, uh, as we uh, have watched you evolve over the years, Dylan, uh, what I've always enjoyed about you is you, your uh, organization, your security organization is deeply in tune with not only the values and culture, but the mission and purpose of Seattle Children's. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how you see it, and then we'll get into how you leverage the ecosystem. No, that's, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're, we're an organization that was founded in uh, 1907, over, over 100 years ago, and founded on a purpose of, of caring for children and children who also couldn't afford the care that they needed. And so today we've grown into a very large organization. Kind of here's an example with this photo here. We've grown a lot just on this main hospital campus location here, but we also have larger divisions where we've spread that care moving into cures as we um, have a large research institute downtown Seattle building a brand new building right now um, and just continuing to grow and help all these children in need. And with that, we've been asked to do a lot more with a lot less and think about how we can bring more value to our business, uh, focusing on our strategic objectives, objectives as an organization. As you can see here, one of our new ones is one team, one mission, one vision. We're three separate divisions, a hospital, a research institute, and a foundation, and bringing them all together to focus on one path, 
with strategic goals. And you can see on the screen there, what I love about what our organization is doing is they've really focused on some really important topics that we leverage in the security industry. One of them is partnerships, growth and integration. I even throw in there digital health or digital and technology. And the lower half there really speaks to, I think, of what we're doing and what we're talking about in this presentation, which is um, intelligence and innovation, building these teams and systems of the future, how we can improve upon things and create some innovation, gather more data, be more effective with that um, as we continue to grow and expand our organizations into the future. So I so really... Dylan, uh, just, uh, I yeah. Just a quick question on this slide. You're saying this slide is something all senior executives at Children's are aware of. This is this is really a slide about what the goals are and how you'll enable them. And, and you're, as a security organization, you're tapping into those. Absolutely. This is pushed honestly to the very front line to say, everyone should be thinking about this and working together so that we can it's really actually leveraging intelligence of your entire enterprise along with our ecosystem, which is what I love. And I love to share this slide with our ecosystem so they understand what we're trying to do and where they fit in with that. Yeah, good. You know, I think one of the one of the challenges that we're talking about here is, you know, we've grown from a small campus in one location to campuses uh, across many states, 40 different locations, again, with three different divisions. And we have to figure out what is our strategic roadmap? How do we get there? And we haven't been a part of all of that. And now as we're coming together, how do we leverage our partners, our security partners, our manufacturers, our ecosystem to help us get there working towards our mission and our strategic objectives? And one of the things that we will talk about and hopefully be able to, you know, brainstorm with is building that scorecard to help us achieve that. We need to get out there and benchmark things and pilot things and um, leverage the financial position of our organization, working with our partners. And developing a scorecard helps us do that very effectively. We need to benchmark the industry for the most part. And if we don't well, it's do really that, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Well, it's interesting. Let's define scorecard for a second because we we see scorecard in total quality management, uh, a term called balance scorecard. But I think what you're saying is you're taking, from the first slide, you're taking all the requirements and use cases uh, that enable a successful security program and then you translate that into a technology roadmap, uh, including evaluation criteria or a scorecard for how it will best suit what you want to achieve. Is that is that correct? That's exactly right. You know, we we have a tight relationship with our IT department, and one of the first questions they always ask us is, "What is it that you need? What is it that you're trying to achieve?" And mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes. You know, I feel like one of the challenges that we face is I often don't know all that I want to achieve or what I can achieve without touching other parts of the industry and getting a feel for what's out there, which helps us, you know, kind of brainstorm and think a little bit greater on that. But definitely we have to develop this scorecard based off of what we can achieve and also what we desire to achieve, thinking about how we can be innovative for the future. So funny you bring that up because more and more we're hearing conversations, and this is really the kind of technology dynamic that has disrupted so many of our industries and uh, and potentially is going to disrupt security as well. And that is this idea that what comes first, you know, you asking for something or mm -hmm. you going through some kind of innovation process that allows you to think outside how, uh, your legacy, uh, your legacy processes and tools, and uh, that innovation process. You know, I I know you're always sitting down trying to think outside what you do today, and 
and that's pretty remarkable actually for this industry. We're very fortunate to have such good partners. Absolutely. Good. Um, uh, uh, Nick, are you on yet? Matt, uh, I think what what I'd like to do, we uh, 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 Nick Weber from Grant PUD uh, is either having technical difficulties or or logistics, so I apologize for that. But uh, Matt, if you and I maybe can team up, uh, and I think Dylan's been sitting with Nick as well on a series of meetings leading up to this webinar. Uh, if we can just uh, go through this, does that sound okay with you, Matt? Absolutely. So, so at the end of the day, public utilities have very unique challenges. And uh, you probably can sum it up with, uh, with one term. And that is, uh, it's, it's not Darth Vader, but it's pretty close to it, right, Matt? <laughs> exactly. The, uh, the kind of compliance and regulations, I know you have these two, Dylan, but the kind of compliance and regulations, as well as the technology dynamic and the evolving all hazards risk condition is all conspiring to create, uh, quite frankly, a, a lot of chaos in the utility industry. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, the bottom line is the compliance there for a very specific reason, and that's to keep your lights on and keep your lights on in a fundamentally efficient way. So uh, with that said, Nick uh, also had uh, some legacy uh, around his electronic, uh, his electric substations. Uh, Matt, you want to give us any insights on that? Yeah, and, and this is where um, I think the audience would get a tremendous amount of information um, as to how one would go about strategizing on implementing a technology to help uh, mitigate the risk and meet compliance. So Nick has a very interesting story as to uh, what happened to his organization, uh, which will also kind of speak to what disaster recovery methods do you have, um, where really in effect you have these uh, compliance measures that are being uh, pushed down from, from the federal government uh, with really an organization that is not centrally connected um, you know, the way that the, uh, the electric industry is, is configured and the way that substations are designed, um, you know, how do you get or meet compliance when, when there's, there's no way to get information back? Um, and then what is the cost to put a technology in place um, to really, you know, meet, meet that compliance or, or regulation? So, obviously, uh, he specifically had some issues with keys and audit capabilities um, around these substations as, uh, you know, the client, the compliance dictates that you must have this some audit trail um, for the timelines and who has access to where and when and how. Um, so as, as he goes through this uh, breakout and presentation, everybody in the audience will get a very, very detailed look as to um, how one can create a scorecard and then deploy this type of technology. I think it also serves to underline uh, kind of a uh, persistent or even systemic uh, problem we have in the industry. And again, back to these silos of excellence, uh, many times uh, decisions are made on budget from top down, and then it's a matter of just uh, um, going into your existing processes and trying to trying to uh, duct tape, if you will, those things you need to do. And there's a fundamental thing here I wanted to grill Nick on, and we'll definitely do it at the Great Conversation, and that is um, uh, what can we do to in that kind of paradigm? What kind of advice can we give to security managers, directors, and CSOs to help them actually find the value and find the investment in these considerations because this uh as as we can see this was a assumed process and an assumed approach to security that went on too long so a uh, pretty pretty interesting story and we'll get to that on uh on uh, march uh, 5th and 6th 
but at the end of the day, they came up with a scorecard. Now, this isn't a pitch uh, for us Hot Boys product, Matt. Uh, tell us exactly why this particular solution helped resolve that problem, though. Yeah, well, you know, I kind of go back to Asa Abloy's uh, view of, of technology and, and innovation, and essentially it's it's applying the right technology based on the functionality that um, that's required for the application. And mm -hmm. working with UD um, and ASG in trying to find a solution that will not only meet the regulatory compliance um, involved, but also um, you know, at, at the cost that's acceptable uh, compared to the risk. And, you know, it's, it's really thinking outside the box. Um, and, and that's something we also try to do uh, with our partners is that in this, um, in our industry, uh, you know, security professionals tend to really think inside of a box and, and not so much outside of the box. And as you work within a team environment and collaborate on, on developing a solution for a given situation, um, you know, not everybody's an expert in certain things. And, and performing a round table and pitching ideas off of each other and truly understanding, um, you know, how the process is going to work, uh, the business flow and the workflows and, and really the users of the system, um, how they're going to use this technology and, and really comply with whatever is being brought down from uh, from your organization. Uh, we come up with with this type of solution that we can get deeper in um, within the presentation and breakout uh, next week. But really, it's it's a it's an intelligent type of key system uh, that transfers audit information um, through the uh, through the web. So it's a it's a, uh, a mobile hosted system. Uh, that you can use and deploy access control. And it looks like it's going to give him all the auditing and reporting he needs to fit his compliance. Precisely, based on the scorecard that he created. That's awesome. Uh, you know, one of the things, uh, one of the things, Dylan, um, that I'm seeing similar between uh, you and Nick Weber at Grant is somehow you were able to take these different domain experts. Uh, Matt mentioned a integrator, ASG, Aronson Security Group. Uh, but it's really interesting. Again, perceptions are real things. Integrators are often seen as, um, as just installing stuff that's already been spec'd out and assessed by a, uh, a consultant. Uh, in this case, though, you do it a little differently. You bring a lot of research to bear internally and externally, and then collaborate with your uh, integrator to actually go through the use case step-by-step step and find that value. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We actually, we have a, a dedicated team that gets together regularly that consists of, uh, I guess, myself and my team from the enterprise security side, a partner with our research security operations, our IT uh, management operations team and our ASG partner. And together we discuss and evaluate technology and products um, and next steps. And it's so important for us that we include them in our, uh, I think really in our path to protect our enterprise. We pilot things with them, we leverage them. And I really don't wanna do anything without that entire team uh, having an opinion and uh, an opportunity to provide their insight as to the direction we're going to help protect the enterprise. So, uh, so here's the key thing. We're going to have a good hour really chewing on some of these issues, and we're going to have lots of opportunity for internal uh, dialogue between all of our attendees, which represents this ecosystem, mostly in users, but again, consultants and integrators. So we're gonna have this chance to really go face-to-face uh, -face with these guys at the great conversation and get, get involved at, uh, at the people, at the process, and at the technology level. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, I'm dedicated to getting any questions you might have had 
that you want forwarded on to any of our speakers today, just go to info at the great We'll be glad to do that. We also, within 24 hours, should have this as a recording on the um, on the uh, Great Conversation YouTube channel, which you see here, but we'll get it published to all attendees so they know where it is. In the meantime, you can register for The Great Conversation at www.thegreatconversation.com, separated by hyphens. And gentlemen, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Let's have a great conversation. Thank you very much. And that is all for today. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.